Good morning, everyone. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be going to Acts 13th chapter this morning for this morning's message. I was reminded of this song, uh, going in, always going back to my elementary school days. But anyhow, the song uh, that really was taken from the Bible uh, that says, uh, To everything, turn, turn, there is a season, turn, turn. And a time for every purpose under heaven. And that's that's kind of the, the message. I used to think that we were created for the times in which we live. And I've recently come to believe that that's not necessarily the truth, but that we are conditioned by the times in which we live might be more appropriate. And the reason why I believe that is because um, we know that that God is in, in control of all things. We, we know that Spirit moves across uh, the earth and, and moves men to do the things which men do. Uh, a couple along with God's Word, which, as was brought out in our Sunday school lesson, is always coming to pass. Everything that is written in there is things that we are seeing taking place even to this day. But I think that has been true down through all the time that people could see God's word being fulfilled throughout all the ages. Uh, but we also understand that there is an adversary in which we face each and every day of our lives, and he is the prince and the power of the air. And he, do, he moves wicked men to do the things in which wicked men do. And so we see that really kind of playing out today. Uh, and, and forces of good versus the forces of evil are something that has always been, but something in which I... I I see today that is actually taking place in the world in which we live. There's so much evil that is out there, and yet uh, we understand that it is also kept at bay at this moment in time because the Spirit of God and the Church, the Lord Jesus Christ, is still in this earth. And as long as those two factors are in this earth, the, the Prince of the Power of the Air, his hands are kind of tied. He's limited to what he is able to do. And just imagine then what he would be capable of doing if he wasn't being restrained at this moment in time. And so we are conditioned by the times in which we live. And I think that's one of the things in which we are going to see in the message this morning. I had had a phone call on Thursday, uh, and in this phone call, I was asked some questions, questions about the church and, and what the church uh, believes today uh, alongside of what the church believed in times past. Uh, and in answering that question, I, I could tell him without any reservations whatsoever that we do not necessarily agree with everything that all religions teach, right? And that we, we would not necessarily permit any person who said to us that they were a preacher of the gospel to stand behind the pulpit and preach. We, we wouldn't do that. That's not the way we are. But what I could say to that is that we were even more staunch in years past than what we are today. That as times have gone, uh, that times past, our forefathers, man, when they, they disagreed with something, they disagreed with it all the way down the line. And they didn't have any problem whatsoever letting everybody know exactly what they, what they thought about certain things. I remember hearing a preacher one time say that, when we get to heaven, the Methodists will be shining our shoes. And I thought to myself, how crazy that is, right? But that was the mindset of the people of days past. Today, we, we have a tendency to be just a little bit more understanding, and I think maybe a little bit more gracious in our approach to certain things like that. But there was a time, and, and again, in our, in our reading, we'll see that, there was a time that when feathers got ruffled, uh, men stood up and they had no problem whatsoever speaking the truth in which they themselves believed, even if that truth was not true at all. And so, in Acts the 13th chapter, beginning our reading in verse 44, we read, And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. 
Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye have put it off, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of, of the Gentiles, uh, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life, believed. Let's go to the Lord and word of prayer. Father in heaven, we bow in your presence. And as your word has been uh read this morning, both here and in our in our Sunday school classes. I pray, Heavenly Father, that hearts have been receptive and that your word has it is moving, even at this moment in time, upon the hearts of your people also, that if there be one that is lost, that they might, uh, through, your, through your word and by your spirit, come to a, a knowledge of saving grace of Jesus in their lives. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you would help me that I might present your word in a way which would be pleasing in your sight that you might be honored and glorified in all things, that that you be, be, would be lifted up and our worship might be true. Father, forgive me where I have failed you and help me that I might be the person that you would have me to be, that I might be a witness both in action and in word of those things in which you what you have for mankind. And again, go with us now as we go into, into this message. May you be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A usual day. I think sometimes we, we forget that's the way life always kind of starts. It's just kind of a usual day. This was a usual worship day for the Jewish people. Uh, and so while it may not say that they were at the synagogue, it's, pro it's, it's, it, it's probably where they all met, you know, at the synagogue, the place of learning, the place of worship. And as they came to that place, they would they would come to hear the word of the Lord. But on this day, which was a usual day, a normal day. They they probably got up, they had their coffee, they went and got cleaned up, did their hair, got dressed, you know, maybe shaved, put on cologne, went to church, went to to the to the meeting place, did their thing, you know. Uh, maybe they sang some songs and they did it half-hearted. Who knows? But a normal worship day. But on a normal worship day, the day things were not so normal at all. For the Jews had heard that a great multitude of Gentiles had gathered, and that that just kind of set them off, right? So what might have been a a normal day at the beginning turned to a day where minds were 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 blown, uh, people were unhappy, and others were made glad. You know, and I mean they were they were exuberant in their in their joy in which they had because of the things in which they had heard while the others it says was moved with 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 envy which basically if you would really take a look at it the word would would mean that they were filled with indignation they were zealous zealously moved with indignation over the fact that so many gentiles had come to this place of which was their place of learning and worship. Seems seems rather sad. But it it also shows kind of the way that 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 people are. And what really I think is is taking place is that there is a change that is that is coming. A change that is in the air. And they knew, they felt, they understood that change was coming. And because they were they were reacting to that change they they moved in such a way as that as they were going to uh they were going to fight against such a change filled with envy filled with indignation they contradicted the things in which Paul was saying now that's where i see that we are kind of coupled in the days in which we live and maybe that's just the way that it's always been you read baptist history and one of the things that you will read uh very clearly is all the disagreements in which they had that they would have meeting after meeting after meeting 
which wasn't a meeting whatsoever, but was one where two sides had come together and they were going to debate over a given topic. Did they change the minds? Did they change the hearts? Did they change the faith of some? Probably. But did they, did they, did, did what they do really do any real good? Did they change the, the, the hearts and minds of those Stoics who believed so, so hard? And it, you know what it reminds me of? And I'm, I'm talking to you about religion. I'm just talking about the church and the way it has been. I'm talking about history and what history has really shown. But what it shows unto me is the politics of the days in which we live. Because in the politics of the days in which we live, you see two sides standing opposing one another. And you wonder how in the world can we get anything truly accomplished when two sides are in such such a way that they disagree in such a manner. And really what it comes down to is that the only way that you could enact a change in politics and policy is that if if the leading group of, of, of one of the sides holds the position of the House or maybe of the Senate, and if they hold that, then they might be able to, to push across some of their ideology. Well, that's the way religion has been. over th- Because really, when you get down to it, back in the early days of America, the, the truth of the matter was, is religion, and, and though they tried to keep religion and, and politics separate, religion kind of ran politics back then. People of moral character, people of moral ideals. Today, it's not so much that way. But in the days of, of Paul, as Paul is speaking before the people, I think one of the things that you see that that he spoke forth the truth unto the people, and as he spoke forth the truth unto the people, those who were in such disagreement contradicted the things in which they said. And if their contradicting it didn't didn't do any good, they blasphemed. In other words, what they what they would do is is the very premise of what Paul was teaching was that Jesus was Jesus had come, born in a manger, lived amongst men. That that here the Messiah, the the God manifested in the flesh, came and was born in a in, in such a, a lowly state. And that he lived his life and he welcomed sinful men to sit with him at the table. That that this Messiah who they had waited for and, and, and believed in would would allow himself to be judged by mankind. And in their judgment, they would blaspheme him. And that he would allow them, their Messiah, would allow them to actually put him to death. And put him in a grave. This is the thing in which they had a hard time believing. This is the thing that they, in which they contradict, contradicted. This is the thing in which they now were blaspheming. They they could not give in to this fact. Now, if you go to Luke, the 22nd chapter, in verse 62, the scripture says, And Peter went out and wept bitterly. If you remember, Peter had denied the Lord three times. And because of that, he went out and he wept bitterly. And it goes on to say, And, and the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and, at, and asked him, saying, prophesy, who is it that smote thee? And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. See, sometimes when men have no real power to persuade other men of the things in which they they say, the contradictions that then flow from their mouths, the blasphemy that come that come couples behind it, the words in which they use to tr- to try to destroy rather than to build up see that's what becomes prevalent is that that when when a disagreement is taking place and really i i think which if you want to really get down to it this is something that they're fighting against god with not necessarily paul and barnabas because god is moving in such a a, a, a way that he's in an, he's enacting change amongst his people. Here, these Jewish believers can say, but we've always been his people. We've, we have this synagogue. This synagogue is ours. That the word has always been our word. That the God of heaven has always been our God. 
something's taking place. A change is being enacted. And they're not ready for such a change. They're not ready to give over to what God is about to do. And so, zealously, they use their words to to try to destroy the the word that God was, was speaking on this given day. Turning away from the Jews, he said unto them, You judge yourselves unworthy. And I I think about that. Because really they were fighting for their worthiness. They were fighting for for what they believed to be true for them. And they saw themselves worthy of this. They They saw themselves as the acceptable ones. They saw themselves as the one ones who could merit such such grace for their own lives. They judge themselves in the word. Because when you really get down to it, it's not our way or the highway. It's God's way or the highway. It, it doesn't we we can't make the change. We have to stay within the parameters of what thus saith the Lord. And and we can't come to God in any old way that we choose to come to God. We can only come to God as God himself is moving in our hearts to move us in a direction where he would have us to go. We We can only, there's only one way to heaven. There's not not every way that that man has deemed to be a way is a true way. And and, and to this, I I just wanted to to share with you the the, the thought because there's so many ways that people believe, right? There are so many different ideas that man have conceived as a means by which they can make their way to God. If If I am a member of the church, that will get you there. Maybe it's not enough, so we'll say, if I'm a member of the church and I'm faithfully in my pew every Sunday, that'll get me. And maybe that's not enough yet. And so we say to ourselves, if I was baptized, you know, then, then that would get me there. Or if I come from a family who through the years has been very good at giving to the church, then that'll get me there. And I say to you, none of those will get you there. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. He is the absolute, only only way that God has given for man. And it doesn't matter whether it was in the days that we live in the New Testament era, or it was in the Old Testament era. It was still the same. Sometimes you might have had to read between the lines a little bit, but it was still the same. The Jews couldn't come to God by, by, by the fact that they were Jews. They could only come to God by believing in the Messiah that was to come. He would be the means. And so this is one of the reasons why they, they, they struck, it struck the core as these Gentiles are being ushered in. It struck the core with them that this Messiah that they believed in was one who was not he didn't come in pomp and, 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 and glory. He came a lowly individual who was born in a stable amongst animals, who, who was born to a family that was not rich but poor. That he li- lived in such many, even during his own ministry while here upon the earth, he said, I do not even have a place to lay my head. That he was beaten, battered, and bruised. For our, our transgressions to the Jews would, would was was seeming to be un- unseemingly. I mean, it just didn't seem right. It, that doesn't make sense. That our Messiah would be treated with such such uh, disdain. But to you and I, it is a it is a sign of how great the love of God is for us. See, we we don't run away from it. We don't hide from it. Our our Savior came to this earth and, and He was born amongst men 
And he was not, he was not elevated in, in his standing while here. He was beaten. He was despised. He was rejected. But that shows a great love that he has for us. That he would allow himself to be treated in such a way. Look, he had said, well, while, while on the cross, he could have called legions of angels, and they would have come down, and they would have they would have aided him in this this situation. But he also prayed in the garden, and said, "Father, if this cup could be taken away from me, then let it be. But if not so, what what you will, let that will be done." See, he gave himself over to doing what he did for us, because we had no other. So, Paul says to his Jewish brethren, he says, you reject, so we turn to another. Turn. Change. And this presents for for you and I uh, an interesting little topic. The Gentiles, they glorified the word of God because it, 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 added them. You know what I'm saying? Whosoever surely meaneth me. Right? So the Gentiles come to an understanding that that was true for them. That whosoever meant me. That that God has, has paved a way for me. That I am able to come by the same means that all others come. And that is through the the redemption that was in Christ to, and, and, the, and His saving grace for our lives. Everyone comes the same way. And that is to be honored and that is to be glorified. That is to be worshipped. That is, that is what God has done for us. The same way that they would come is the same way I must come. And, and while that, that others might say that that's hard to, 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 to believe that a God in heaven would send anybody to hell, but he's not. He's not sending anybody to hell. He's providing an access for all mankind to be able to come to him and by him receive eternal life. The choice is ours. Hell was not something that, that God wanted for mankind, but mankind has chose that way. You have deemed yourself unworthy of salvation. And due to that fact, he turned to another. He turned to the Gentile. As many as were foreordained, or as many as were ordained, to to, to, to eternal life, they believed. The interesting topic, ordained. There, the, there is a class of people who would basically say that what this means is uh, election. You know, it has to do with the election that God elected a certain group to be saved. That God has 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 this group as His group, and these are the only people that will and can be saved. But there's also a class of people that that understand what this truly means is that the, that man, certain people are disposed to this. And what, and what I have to share with you is this, is, is the Word of God is, is, is available to all of mankind. It's, it's not hidden from anyone. And in any group that would say, that, that would keep you in the dark as to what God's Word has to truly say, that, that's a group you really don't want to be a part of. You want to be part of a group that, that is unveiling the truth and just letting you believe what the word of God has to say. That that the spirit of God is is moving in, in such a way as he is causing uh, people in their hearts to believe in the grace of God for their salvation. That, that this uh, ordaining that we speak of here uh, is, is really a, more about what God is is doing in the times in which we live. Look, the Gentiles were kept kept separated for for a time being. Did they were they able to come? Yes, there was a means by which God had given for even the Gentiles during the Old Testament uh, 
era to come in and be a part of. To receive the grace. And, and there were some that did. We, we, all, we all know and, 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 and understand that there were, there were individuals who, who believed. Ruth being one of them, right? That there were those who, who believed. And by believing, they, they received that eternal life in which they had looked for, which they had longed for. Eternal life is something that God offers unto all of mankind. And he, he has done so by giving His Son as a sacrifice for the sins of all of mankind. Not to any one group in particular, but to all who would receive, all who would believe. So the main inquiry is for us, is what is the meaning of this ordaining? And I, and I tell you, it, it has everything to do, it's like this. We all meet in a certain place, and and we all come together in this certain place. We all hear the word of God together in this certain place. So all people have received the very same message, right? But not all people who's hearing this same message are going to believe. But to those who do believe, they receive eternal life. Now, did both groups have an opportunity? Yes, because the same word is being preached to them. The same spirit is moving upon them. And it is up to them to believe or to not believe. It's, it's, it's our choice. God has done everything possible. And, 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 and understand this, it's like two, two bakers in a kitchen baking the same cake following the same instructions. But maybe somewhere down the line, one one added a little bit too much of this, or one took away a little bit of this. It was their choice to add it or take away. And it, and 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 while they're two bakers baking the same cake, they're not going to be the same. And so, while God Himself has ordained the the way in which we might come to receive eternal life, and that He has accomplished what He set out to do in order for that person to receive eternal life, and his word had gone forth and, and convicted the heart, it is only on the base, only on, for the one who truly believes that they might receive. The, the opportunity was the same for both. The means by which they could have received was the same. He ordained the way. He ordained the method. He ordained who would, would, would be the one who would provide it. He ordained that. And then he ordained what it is that we should receive. Listen to what Romans the 8th chapter, verse 28 says. It says, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And them who he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now follow the line of thought in which the apostle is saying right there. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to what? To conform to the very image of his son that we might be like him. And if so, he, he, he has done that work already in our lives. He goes on to say, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, him he also called. And whom he called, he did justify. And whom he justified, he glorified. That is God working, his working in our lives. It's all the same. <laughs> how, we, how we receive it, how we allow it to move us, how we allow it to be effective within our life, that, that, a lot of that has a, is up to us. But God has already done all the work. Whom he did these things for, he also did these things for. That is God's work. And we also read in Romans 9, verse 22, where it says, What if God willing to show his wrath 
and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and what and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had before prepared unto glory. It was already there. It was already in, in, in play. But wouldn't you ask yourself this question? How come God didn't just wipe Israel out? He wanted to at one point, if you remember, that during the days of Moses, when they were so hard hearted, that he he wanted. He, he said, "Moses, I'm going to start all over with you," and 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 he wanted to, but Moses pleaded for for the children of Israel on their behalf. But he says in, in this fashion, he says, "What if God, being patient as He is, being as long suffering as He is, what what if God delay, withheld from the vessels of 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 Dishonor. What if, what if he withheld from their punishment? You know, just just waited. There's coming a time a turning takes place. All 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 I know is that's in God's hands. We will stand before the Lord. We will give an account for the things in which we have done in this life. That is also true. And and sometimes. It, it seems like God moves quickly. You know, when people when when, when people aren't and we're, we always look for it. By the way, we always look for the big thumb in the sky to come down and be able and to to kind of rectify certain things. You know, if this guy's doing it, bam! Why not? Why not? Why not just destroy him? Well, why not just you know pluck them out and and do away with them? They're not doing any good. They're harming. You know the, the cause of Christ as it is. Why is it that God it, it seems to be so long suffering and patient with these people and does not destroy them immediately? Now, what would we do if we were God? Because if we were God, there might not be anybody left. We would destroy them all. Because every time somebody did something that was just slightly off what we thought to be right, we would we would execute judgment quickly. But God is long suffering to us for not willing that any should perish, but that all men should come to repentance. A turn. A turn. Today God is working things that maybe we can't see. Maybe we don't understand exactly why. But God is working things out for the betterment of mankind, for the blessing of his, his people, and for his own honor and glory. God is working things out, and we can trust that whatsoever God does, it will be good. It'll be right. It'll be lasting. May God be honored, and may God be praised. And if you do not know the Lord as your personal Savior today, my prayer is that that you will, that you will allow the Spirit to speak to your heart, and that you will give in to the conviction of the Spirit in your life. Accept Jesus as your Savior. He is the only way. He proclaimed, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Accept Jesus as a means of your salvation today. Accept him for his everlasting truth. Let us go to the Lord with
to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in 